Hello everybody and welcome at our GCP channel. Today our video is once again in English as we have guests from abroad. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Ms. Robin Hansen to speak about clinical studies in Australia. Hello Robin, welcome. It's very nice that you followed our invitation and that you're willing to let us know something about conducting clinical studies in Australia. Maybe you can start first with a few words about yourself and then about your experience with clinical studies in Australia. Andreas, thank you for this opportunity to share information about running clinical studies in Australia. And Luca and I are directors of Molecule to Market, a boutique Australian CRO established in 2012. I've worked in clinical trials in Australia for nearly 25 years, across all phases of research and a wide variety of therapeutic areas. At Molecule to Market, much of our work is in interventional clinical trials with pharmaceuticals and devices. All our team have worked in clinical trials for a minimum of 15 years each. Great, Robin. That's really impressive. Thus, let's talk about Australia. According to my knowledge, you have your office in Melbourne. Honestly, I think most of the European followers do not know that much about Australia. Please, can you tell us a little bit more about your country? As you can see, Australia is a very large island. We have a population of nearly 25 million people. Most of you have heard of Sydney with the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge. Sydney has been our largest city for decades with a population of 5 million people. But Melbourne is our fastest growing city, now with a population of 4.8 million. The economy of Australia is highly developed and one of the largest mixed market economies in the world. In 2017, Australia was the second wealthiest nation in terms of wealth per adult after Switzerland. All Australians are covered by the universal, national, tax-funded health insurance scheme called Medicare and 50% of Australians also choose to take additional private insurance cover. With all Australians having full access to medical care, Australia is able to attract cutting-edge research supported by a well-equipped system both in the public and private arenas. Okay, Robin, that's really interesting and I think many people would like to learn more about your country. Let's come to clinical study and let's start first with investigators. What kind of investigators do you usually involve in clinical studies? Do you involve GPs, investigators of private clinics or hospitals? We have a large group of key opinion leaders in Australia who are often approached to be involved in clinical trials. Depending on the nature of the clinical trial, we can involve investigators from GP settings, private clinics and hospitals. We also have some highly regarded, dedicated phase one units in our major cities. Okay, and how much experience do your investigators have with clinical trials? Do they have GCP training certificates? Do you have legal requirements for GCP training courses or even refresher courses like we have in Germany? Since the early 1990s, Australia has been involved in all aspects of clinical trials because we understand the importance of research in medical care. All investigators in Australia are required to be GCP certified in line with ICH GCP and all update their certification as required. Okay, and in terms of therapeutic areas, which kind of studies do you usually conduct in Australia? And let's be honest, I know a lot of CROs which try to sell their country in a very good way and they promise that they can deliver all patients as born their need and that leads to recruitment problems, to frustration and to conflicts. What kind of patients can we find well in your country? Because of our relatively small population, advanced facilities and knowledge, Australia's clinical trial strengths lie mainly in Phase 1 and Phase 2 studies. We have of course worked across all therapeutic areas, but find most of our work is in oncology, respiratory, neuroscience and cardiovascular. Okay, that makes perfectly sense. Please tell us a little bit more about your regulatory environment in Australia. How do the ethics committees work? What kind of competent authorities need to approve the studies and what kind of timelines do you have? Australia has a fast and pragmatic regulatory pathway for clinical trials. Under the Clinical Trials Notification or CTN scheme administered by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, we call it the TGA, research proposals are submitted directly to Australian Human Research Ethics Committees. These committees assume the primary review responsibility for ethical and scientific review. 
The usual review cycle takes only four to eight weeks and is based on the submission of a protocol, an investigator brochure and, if required, independent toxicology report. This is an effective and efficient process, avoiding costly preparation of extensive regulatory applications and means that research can start much sooner. Australia has developed an ethics review process for multi-centre research, allowing mutual acceptance across institutions, which helps reduce the unnecessary duplication of review of research. Okay, that means your timelines are very similar to our timelines in Europe. However, you told me once that there is a way of speeding up the process significantly. Could you explain me once again how it works so that our followers also learn how to speeding up the process in Australia? Under the CTN scheme, we simply notify our regulatory body that the clinical trial has been approved by an ethics committee. This process takes only one week. Our competent authority accepts our ethics committee's rigorous review of the study and the compound and simply registers that the clinical trial is being conducted. Our reporting requirements of serious adverse drug reactions, however, remains as rigorous as other competent authorities. Safety is not compromised in this process. Excellent! According to my experience, the start-up process in most countries also depend on the duration of contract negotiation between sponsor and study sites. What do the sponsors need to expect in Australia? Is it possible to speed up the process of negotiation? In Australia, we have standardised templates for contracts and standardised payment schedules published by the AMA to ensure consistency and transparency in contract negotiation. To speed up the process and for consistency, we usually prepare a standard budget for all sites to use and any variation to this payment schedule and contract must be clearly justified before approval. By starting the contract negotiations at the time of ethics submission, we aim to have this contract signed by the time ethics approval is granted. Okay, very really good, thank you. What is your experience with inspections in Australia? Do you have a local competent authority in Australia or a central authority? Are the competent authorities of other regions, for example from Japan, USA or Europe, doing inspections in Australia? We have experience with local inspections in Australia. We also have experience with both FDA and EMA inspections. Many of our studies are subjected to industry audits. All authorities are within their rights to audit Australian studies that will be submitted to their regulatory body. Okay, thanks. Let's change the topic slightly. I learned in the past that the Australian government tries to make it more attractive to start certain business activities in Australia. They also try to promote starting more clinical studies in Australia by offering tax incentives. Could you explain me a little bit more the system, how it works and if it really makes the start of studies for sponsors more attractive in Australia? The Australian Government's Research and Development Tax Incentive has made Australia an attractive destination to undertake clinical trials, taking advantage of R&D initiatives. Aiming to encourage more industry investment in R&D, the incentive provides businesses investing in eligible R&D with generous tax offsets. Clients can recover up to 43.5 cents from every dollar spent on R&D. The incentive provides for increased access by international companies because there is no requirement to hold the intellectual property in Australia. Above all, the system provides a globally competitive tax incentive for conducting R&D activities in Australia. We can put our clients in direct contact with tax advisors that will help facilitate easy, expedient and cost-effective access to the Australian R&D tax incentive. Okay, I think that's a fantastic way of starting more clinical studies in Australia. Nevertheless, the sponsor of clinical studies need to have an affiliate or legal representative in Australia, correct? What kind of responsibilities does a legal representative in your country have? Do you just need a post box or do they need to do something? Do they really take over sponsor responsibilities? Could you explain me your system a little bit more in detail? Any clinical study that is performed in Australia needs to have an Australian sponsor to act as its legal entity. The entity can be an individual, a company, an institution or an organisation that takes responsibility for the conduct of a clinical trial, including legal matters such as the provision of insurance, indemnity and finance. 
we can assist our clients to identify a local sponsor. Okay, Robert, thank you very much for all the information so far. We are nearly at the end where I like to ask my interview partners an important question. If you could give a sponsor an advice, what needs to be considered and what can be expected when they decide to run a study in Australia or for which kind of studies they should consider Australia, what would you tell them? Because of the high quality and obvious financial benefits, we encourage sponsors to consider conducting their phase one and two studies in Australia. If the sponsor would also like to include Australia in larger phase three studies, we recommend at least three to four sites across our country to ensure a good geographic spread. Thank you very much, Robert. It was very interesting and I enjoyed it very much to speak with you. As you know, I'm personally a big fan of Australia. I like the variation of Australians' nature and the friendly people there. I hope that our interview might help companies to decide whether they should conduct a clinical study in Australia. I also hope that our viewers and followers like the video that they learned something about conducting clinical studies in Australia. Please, viewers, please subscribe to our channel and see you the next time again. Bye bye.